the castle before nightfall. Ride on and tell them that we come. We're still too close to the trees, Your Grace. These woods are full of cutthroats. I'm half dead already from the cold. Just go, ride! Sire. Now, remember, daughter, when you meet the prince, however rough or coarse you might find him, remain serene. Avoid all gestures that might convey shock or disappointment. You might even try to smile. It's enough that I'm here. In my opinion, this princely romance should be nipped in the bud. Think of the expense of a royal wedding. Think of the dowry. The chink of gold in the treasury. This betrothal can only strengthen our hands. Skies of the gold, perhaps. But what of the land that comes with the maid? Your Majesty, I know this territory well. It's nothing but rock and a stinking bog. I wonder they have the gall to offer it. Rock of some value, my lord. It will give us control of the border for over 40 leagues. After the wedding. If Saxony and Bavaria choose to invade us, no bog is going to stop them. Their army is vastly superior to ours. My dear lord, you have nothing to fear. <laughs> if ever our neighbors saw fit to invade us, your future king, Wenceslas, would submit rather than fight. Do you feel it? The fair Joanna. They enter by the north gate. How many women be so angry, Richard? Be assured of one thing, my lord. When he takes the throne, my stepson will make an alliance with the German Empire. We have his grandmother to thank for that. Her German missionaries have made a monk of him. Indeed. <laughs> Madam, he must be stopped. The church cannot be allowed to interfere in the affairs of state. Ah, yes. But to what lengths are you prepared to go? To stifle that influence? Bring the noble lord to my chamber, Lord Tanna. Father Joseph, I am too old, sire. Then you, Brother Paul. The honor shall fall upon you, sire. Who's 
show you something. to Father Joseph's chapel again. You forget your rank, Captain. You forget mine. Prince or no prince, I have a good mind to take you over my knee and give you the whipping you deserve. Too old and too late. By all the saints, sire, you drove me to it. I can have you flogged for that. So please, Your Highness. I promised your father when he died that I would protect you from that Satan in skirt who holds his crown. Call a broken jaw protection. You should have taken me with you. Suppose you've been challenged or, or followed to the chapel. I want to Father Joseph. Did you consider the risk to him? These are dangerous times, sire. Not all those woodsmen are well disposed toward you. You fuss like an old woman. I was in no danger. In four months' time, this royal circle will rest on the head of a youth who listens only to priests and peasants. The heir apparent is a most determined Christian. See the throne. Be rid of him. Madness. To say nothing of treason. No. Madam, you have a true son, your own flesh and blood, one you can control. Let Boleslav rule. The country could be thrown into turmoil. Small palace revolution. Not unusual during the minority of a boy ruler. Until he comes of age, he has no power to stop us. Wenceslas is loved by the peasants, and he has powerful friends in the army. Then we must smoke them out. Isolate the prince. Eliminate all those who support him. Make use of the winter. Beat and starve the peasants into submission and raise their taxes. Take away the beam. And the roof will collapse. Then make it known that Prince Wenceslaus has decreed all this. Indeed. Feed their hatred, not their bellies. Hunger is a great persuader, my lord. And their hunger is our strength. Reward only those who are loyal to the Queen. We must be undivided on this. There can be no power without unity. Well... If there's a nest of Christian rats left in this kingdom, I'll burn them out. My lord? Come, come. No need to tie yourself in knots. Are we as one on this? That guy's sheep. You tempered oaf. What does this mean? How has this happened? We meet to discuss a betrothal and end by plotting high treason. I'll have none of it. All right. Are they truly with us? Will they dare to lift a hand against Wenceslas? Let them eat thistles if they don't. One thrust of my sword, that's all it will take. <laughs> oh, to be a man. The stars, madam, that you are not. Come. Come. 
today. And at Father Yosef? Frail in body, but not in spirit. Oh, if only your dear mother and father were alive to see this day. How proud they would have been of you. And like your stepmother, who by the by has already sent an envoy in search of you, have you forgot this day? You should have been here to reach your future wife. No. No, I had not forgotten. And please don't tell me what a beauty she is. Or how obedient and submissive. I shall only be civil because the rules of chivalry decree that I should greet her as an honored visitor. She seems as gentle as a mock. You know as well as I that this marriage is a mockery. I will not be used by my stepmother in her greedy games. The poor child knows not of that. No. God protect her. When did they arrive? An hour ago, and the queen is soon to give them audience, and you should be there. Good manners, if nothing else. Oh, go, my dear. If only to please an old lady. <laughs> Very well. To please you. are cold to the knees. Noble guest, we receive you with honor. The honor is mine, your majesty, that the Prince Wenceslas should be taking my daughter's hand in marriage. I like the Prince to be absent at his own betrothal. But I need your trumpet. The heir apparent is possessed of all the princely virtues, your grace, save one. Punctuality. Uh, with the uh, your Majesty's permission. The dowry, ma'am. And these, the title deeds of that part of my land we agreed upon. We thank you for these endowments. It is, of course, reward enough that we should be blessed with such a charming addition to our family. But your generous gifts are most welcome. I'm sure the union will bring mutual benefits, Your Majesty. Indeed. Come forward, child. Let me see your face. Uh, forgive her, Your Majesty. She's overwhelmed by the occasion and by weariness. Evidently. Our journey was exhausting. At every turn of the road, we expected robbers and cutthroats. Heaven forbid that your grace should fall in with such villains here at court. <laughs> they call you Joanna, do they not? What ails you, child? Are you sick? Lift up your head. Do I detect a stubborn streak? I do declare, mother, that the girls are mute. Now, there's a blessing for Wenceslas. What more could a man ask for than a wife who's dumb? She is a quiet child, sire. 
Joanna, what are you thinking of? Do you wish to shame me in the eyes of the Queen? I wish to go home. Oh, she has spirit. That is good. Be cheerful, my dear. Marriage is not an affliction. Especially if you are betrothed to a prince. I don't wish to be married to anyone. Johanna. Your Majesty. You have indeed traveled far, my lord. Now you must rest. The marriage ceremony will take place on the last day of the month. Soon we will proclaim the happy event. We shall prepare for the feast and meet again to celebrate. I am the Queen's servant. in that vile bone shaker soaked to the skin and then frozen so stiff that my tunic cracked. And for what? To be humiliated by my own daughter before the sovereign of Bohemia. Such disgrace. Whose son, it seems, has even less interest in me than I do in him. The prince is bound in honor and so are you. You are contracted to one another whether the marriage takes place next week or next year. Does it mean nothing to you that I have no love for this prince? There's no talking to you in this mood. My one comfort is that your poor dear mother is not alive to suffer the shame you have brought on our family this day. Foolish girl, you are marrying into royalty. You expect love as well. <laughs> you silly creature, don't you have any friends either?
There must be more willing girls for you to take as a wife. If she were only as plain and vulgar as her father, I could dismiss her without regret. But there's a manner about her, Tomas. Mmm, bad temper. <sighs> she seems to me altogether remarkable. I'd rather face a wild boar. Who's there? Show yourself. Get up. <laughs> Such eyes. Her mind could drown in those eyes. And did you see the way she defied the queen? Then oblige the queen, sire, and marry her. And sacrifice the poor girl for the sake of her own dowry? <laughs> I think not, Tomas. Besides, the wench has made her feelings plain enough. Mother, mm -hmm. is there really no way to prevent this betrothal? <laughs> Why would you want to? She works perfectly into our plan. Let him marry the little person, then. They deserve each other. See it from another point of view. Your brother has been sold to the highest bidder for the price of a dowry to fill the royal coffers. We need this marriage. Mother. What now? We let the marriage proceed. We take the dowry. And then we kill the girl. <laughs> it's so simple. How astonishingly subtle, my dear. And how would you have it done? Well, speedily, before the bridal bed is warm. <laughs> Can you imagine the fruit of such a coupling? A vixen mated to an ape. A little poison, perhaps? Oh, yes, that's good. That's very good. Something wicked sprinkled in her wine. <gasps> to bring on a fever. Not unusual in these days of plague and pestilence. Or an accident. Might be safer. A fall from a very high place. Why not? She seems crushed under the burden of authority. But who will push her from this lofty height? You, my dear. Lord Gomo. Or a strong wind. Don't mock me, mother. <laughs> Just one squalling male brat. That's all it takes to deprive me of any hope of succession. Don't you think I've thought of that already? And if she gives them an heir? Mother's plan is working. And Mother has a plan for that as well. Even as we speak, Lord Gomor is driving another nail into your stepbrother's coffin. You will be king. Come. Madam, Prince Wenceslas. Must you always enter the room as if you were on horseback? You sent for me, stepmother. Where have you been since midday? Do I smell priest? Or is it horse flesh? Hmm? So difficult to tell the two apart. Don't you think? Where have you been? You think that silence is a proper response? Does a king have to answer to such a demand? <laughs> king? Is it? And just when did you complete your apprenticeship for this position? While the Regency is still mine, you will do as I bid. Just practicing. Oh, 
do try to be punctual on the day of your wedding. It's one of those strange little rituals of courtship that requires your presence. <laughs> Unless, of course, you've taken a vow of virginity. One day your sour tongue will trip you up, stepbrother. Monster! Good night. Esseritatum tuum, itseme, deduxerunt, et My son, you have no sense of occasion. Oh, yes. <laughs> they threw their prayers at me. <sighs> you have done well, my lord. And now I wish you a very good night. Here, Oscar. 
Isn't that the coronation scepter? He goes too far. There is a certain lack of kingly dignity. Come here, Paige. Say it. Say it. Help his majesty. Louder. Hell to his majesty. And? King of Bohemia! Uh, ow! Did you know that one of Lord Tunner's duties as Chancellor is to be the guardian of infants, lunatics and idiots? And did you know that one of mine is to be the keeper of the Queen's conscience? Light duties, indeed. <laughs> the forest trees yes yes and uh, now we must increase the dose every rabbit every deer should become crown property every sack of grain every fur pelt <laughs> that public floggings be the daily event would you have me disembowel their children as well <laughs> Have faith, my lord. Patience. One dead priest at a time. The persecutor will never be their king. Before my regency ends, we will see the peasants rise up against Wenceslas with such hatred. The Prince Boleslav will see like a savior. Young Tarek! Young Tarek! Look alive, you idle cur! Are you there, young Tarek? Can't you hear the bell? Come with us to pay your taxes! Not even the prince can squeeze blood from the stone. 
hope we shall all perish with this new tax. Young Tarek! Are you dead? Wenceslas, my lady. <laughs> he has a little bit of a temper, my lady. One of our horses fell dead on the journey here. The cold, I suppose, kept the wolves happy after that. You were close enough so you could see the blood on their teeth. <laughs> that bell, why does it ring so? It calls the sheep for fleecing. Today, the peasants pay their monthly dues to the tax collector. But I know you. You're the trumpeter from the gallery. My brother. We look much alike. I'm just a humble groom, my lady. Well, if you're the prince's groom, you must know him well. What sort of a man is he? Well, you can tell me if we'll go no further, I swear. Is he well favored? Oh, not at all. This horse is prettier. Why do you stare, sir? You are impertinent. Between ourselves, my lady, the prince is no match for one as fine as you. You have eyes that can melt the coldest heart. And how you mock me? No. No, not I. Eyes that could melt the coldest heart. That's from some verse, I'm sure of it. I believe you were told to say these things to me by your master. <sighs> Not the prince, my lady. He's very coarse in his ways. They told me he could read Latin. Oh, he can't read. He's cross-eyed. Constantine Vassin. Farmer. Durek. Pavel Vassin. Brother of Constantine. Blacksmith. <laughs> Correct. Jakob Rooney. It's already grows tedious. I dare say these men would willingly forego the great honor of meeting you once a month, my lord. The barrier. Some of them can barely walk, let alone afford the taxes. Correct. You have an exaggerated regard for the lower classes, Captain. Yes, sir. To be expected, I suppose, since you were okay. recently one of them yourself. Correct. Jan Turek. Woodcutter. And what is this? I have nothing more to give. You have your neck, woodcutter. Ooh. Ed Forrester. You know this man? Jan Turek, my lord. Idle troublemaker like his father used to be. Nothing but complaints. The swine should be whipped. He knows the law and the penalty for not paying. The noble lord wishes to have you flogged, Jan Turek. Are you quite sure you're not in a position to improve our financial fortune? It is your duty to pay your taxes. Master, I have a duty to my child who is sick from hunger and cold. I'm not alone, sire. Many such will die this winter. Enough of this. <coughs> Taste the lash. Or make him remember his duty quick enough. Release the woodsman. Your Highness. Enough, my Lord Chamberlain. This 
is more than enough, sir. Then let the man go. I told you, my master helps the poor. Page. Sire. Take this man to the kitchen. See that he has food to take home. Sire, thank you. Go to the kitchen with my page. He will give you food for your child. dignity of silence, oh. however rough you find the prince, you must remain serene. I see some animals that were less poor. Is this how you define serenity? Ill-treating furniture, shouting, and a sick man? If he can accept you without criticism, why can't you do the same? destroyed by fire and Father Joseph murdered. If a storm had not delayed my journey, I, I would not be here to tell you this. Continue. Do not spare us. I learned from the people what happened. One of Her Majesty's barons came at night and unstruck Father Joseph with his sword. A giant of a man, they told. Then his men destroyed the chapel. The people fled into the forest. This giant? Did he speak? Forgive me, sire. You can tell me. He spoke only once. And briefly. As he raised his sword, he shouted, this is done in the name of Wenceslas. That evil monster Goman will pay for this with his life. That is in the hands of God, my dear. Madam, what further sign do you need of the Queen's treachery? Captain is right, ma'am. The Queen wishes us nothing but ill will. It is no longer safe for even you to carry a book of prayers. And there is more. In the city I heard rumors of a new coin to be minted. My stepmother's regency ends in the spring when I come of age. The coin is to celebrate my coronation. No, sire, not this one. It seems that the royal treasury has been ordered by the queen to engrave all new coins of the realm with your stepmother's likeness. Oh, if that woman is allowed to rule. There will be no peace in Bohemia. Since your father died, I have counseled you to put away the sword and pray for spiritual guidance, believing that the shedding of blood can only cause a greater rift between good Christian men and those that Hide with the Queen. But now it is clear. You can no longer wait until you are king. Thomas, 
Ride to Budetsch and show this ring to Baron Yeji. To no one else. And your hand to his. It shall be done. Lord Yeji will understand what it signifies. A call to arms, sire? If the Queen believes I am powerless to act until I come of age, she has a surprise awaiting her. Nothing to fear. It's cold as a grave in here. Why is there no fire? Master, we have no logs to burn. Woman, you are surrounded by trees. Why do you not help yourself to fuel? Without fire, you will perish. The law says we are forbidden to take even one twig of the royal forest. What law? I know of no such decree. By order of Prince Wenceslas, Master. devil are you? On whose orders do you forbid these people to take game or firewood? On the orders of Prince Wenceslas, you troublemaker. I promise you this, good wife. There will be an end to your persecution. Come on. Hmm. Your Majesty has no horses to tend to. I need your counsel, Johanna. Sire, you may do with me as you wish. Mock me if it amuses you. Marry me if you must. My father signed a contract. What choice do I have? I have never taken anything by force or guile. Certainly not a bride. And I have no desire to be in a martyr's bed. It is about the marriage contract that I wish to talk to you. To be married to the future king will reflect much honor on the bride's father. But you and I are of one mind, I think. That there should be no wedding. Why, sire, your hand is bleeding. This must be bathed and wrapped. Well, it looks good, but I'm perfectly well used to Give the interruption, Majesty. What is it, my lord? Madam, I think you should hear what our fat friend has to say. Speak. Majesty, I was attacked by a giant of man, armed with a sword, 
in a wooden club. I was beaten about the head, most cruelly. Wood against wood. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you waste our time with this nonsense? As Chief Forrester, you have the power to deal with these matters yourself. My lord, the, the culprit is proving harder to find than a ghost. I've had men beat, and still they do nothing but gabble of miracles and magic. They say I was attacked by the phantom. The phantom? There has been talk of a horseman who spread sedition amongst the peasants. Honey-colored horse, white cloak. No face. It's an ancient forest, Majesty. Strange things have happened there. And when he struck you, did you see this phantom face? I saw only stars. <laughs> <laughs> you may laugh. And while this man lay senseless, much wood was stolen. Devil take it, man. How long were you unconscious? A week? Minutes only, sir. You see why they now talk of miracles. No ordinary mortal could cut down so many trees. You idiot! The peasants tell lies to deflect attention from their own crimes. Henceforth. Every man, woman, or child caught stealing firewood or game will be brought here to rot in the dungeon. Make that known. <laughs> now they will know. The wind has changed. We must endure the betrothal feast together. But you have nothing to fear for my stepmother while I am by your side. She is not all she seems, you know. Her true nature is sly and scheming. And then she is exactly what she seems. When I told her I wished to go home, she looked at me as if she'd have me thrown to the wolves. Fortunate wolves. some vile potion in her goblet. There's but one way to know that. No, sir. Maybe the taster. <laughs> Who was it said chivalry belonged to a bygone age? If His Royal Highness wishes me dead, he has only to marry me himself. One night with you, so I would achieve more than a barrel of poison. Uh, Johanna. Uh. Well said. Your daughter has a sharp tongue, my lord. Madam, I cannot imagine bearing a greater shame than this. Oh, please, now. Do not distress yourself. 
Better a cat than a milksop kitten? Where is my grandmother? Unwell, perhaps. She was perfectly well at noon. Your Grace, this is indeed a time for celebration. Since from the happy union of these two people, your daughter and my stepson, will spring an alliance stretching from the far mountains of Bohemia to the lush farmlands of your duchy. Thus united, our two royal houses will stand rich and invincible. However, even such joy as this must be tinged with sorrow. For the widowed Queen Ludmilla has told me of her desire to withdraw from court and seek solace for her final days in solitary contemplation far away from us all. She shall not be exiled. Sit down. This banishment is your doing. I command you to be seated. You will not be. This is an empty and foolish gesture, Arnulf. You must know I mean my grandmother no harm. If I allow you to pass, sire, the guard commander will have me whipped. And if you don't, I shall have you whipped. Sire. What am I to do? My instructions are to let no one pass in either direction. I'm a good soldier, and know only that I must obey orders. Then I order you to stand aside. Two orders to obey. You see the position I'm in. Now I see the position you're in. I'm always happy to be of service to His Majesty. Well, ask anything of me, sir. I shall want no extra pay. I'm good with horses. I was born in a stable. I don't know if you have spirit. not to let her go. I will not. Grandmother. Oh, when just last. This banishment must be opposed by force if necessary. Oh, my dear. You were but a child when your father died. You have no knowledge of the battle I have had in your upbringing. I only wanted to form your heart to the love of God as your father would have wished. That woman did everything in her power to thwart me. Does she really believe she'll control me by separating us? It is my influence over you that she fears. Oh, my continued presence here can only be a danger to you and, and to me. You have always been by my side, grandmother. If you obstruct her in this, <laughs> she will simply find some other way to dispose of me. Oh, no. I am too old to fight. I shall never submit to her will. Your Majesty, 
Every valley and pass between here and Tessim will be blocked with snow. It is a terrible journey. You will be my guide and comfort. Be wise, my dear. It is only a brief separation before your coronation. And Tomas and his men must travel with you. Oh, no, no. The court has never been more divided in its loyalties. You are in constant danger. Tomas must remain here with you at all times. Do not worry. We shall come to no harm. God is with us. <laughs> One last toast, gentlemen. To Lord Miller. Uh -huh. Good riddance to our holy stench. <laughs> and to St. Michael, the archangel. A Christian toast. I'm told he's the guy to souls after death. Poor dear Lord Miller. She so ardently desires a martyr's crown, it seems unfair not to help her secure it. She would never have enjoyed her new home to draft him down. When must it be done? Take as many men as you need for the task. For one old witch? <laughs> I'll go alone. Before she reaches Teddy. And when the old shrew is under the ground, make sure the peasants don't come crawling to prey over her rickety bones. <laughs> <laughs> that Her Majesty has finally lost patience. Now take no notice of my daughter, sire. She may appear reluctant to assume the responsibilities of marriage, but she will grow to appreciate the arrangement. Don't talk to me, father, as if I were deaf and dumb. I understand my position very well and can speak for myself. My Lord Duke, why do you think the Queen has encouraged this betrothal? A marriage made in heaven, sire. Oh, the next best thing. No. For one reason only. Greed. For the golds you brought with you in the border territory. Once the queen has those, your daughter's presence in this castle will be as fleeting as a snowflake on a summer's day. She will not live long enough to bear me a son. But then you misjudge me, sire. And so does she. Indeed, you do misjudge her. She's as strong as a horse and as stubborn as a mule. If this marriage takes place now, the Queen will see to it that nothing comes between Prince Boleslav and the crown he covets. My only wish is to protect Johanna. I do not fear the Queen at all. I must be sicker than I thought. First she says, no, I hate him. He has the manners of a pig. Then she says, never. I would rather die than be wed. Now she takes up her wifely duties before the marriage. Confound it, I will not be treated like a court jester. God willing, my lord, if you will only do as I ask now, nothing will prevent my marriage to your daughter when I am king. Do I have your allegiance? Father, please. There is the possibility, of course, that... The Queen might have your throat cut, too. You have my allegiance. You must be ready to leave within the hour. My grandmother goes with you as far as Tekken.
built in tonight's crane? In the ruins of the old castle, my lord. Nothing, sire. There is no sign of the prince. His bedchamber? Empty, Majesty. His bed has not been slept in. And the stables? No, Excellency. Good. You may go. So, he's gone off with his grandmother. Our Christian mice have scuttled off. Together. The fool has laid his own head on the block. Now is the time, Majesty. Bar has returned to the castle. Strike down his supporters. Seize the day. Mumbling spells. On your feet. Get up. Now you can enjoy the comforts of your past. Over there. Sentry. All well. I saw the horse and took it as a bad sign. Shall I bring him closer to the fire, Master? While there are wolves about. Dangerous times. <coughs> Who's there? Go on! You murderous heathen!
happen. my decision. I need you all, woodsmen, farmers, millers, to come with me back to the castle. All those not in chains, he means. We're half starved to death. Not four leagues from here, my friend Lord Yeji waits with an armed force from Budech. If it's justice you seek, then help us fight for it. We pay more taxes because of you. We endure public flogging. Our children starve. All this is a sickness the Queen has spread. A plague of lies. Then who were the taxes paid for if not for you? For the Queen and her henchmen. I say we go. I'm Yantarek. You all know me. We are not soldiers, Yantarek. We have no arms, no horses. We have axes and staves. You have your fists and your feet. With right on your side, you will be as knights of God. What say you, friends? Will you march with your future king? and holding meetings. Well, the devil take the kitchens and in use of the prince. And where is Count Yertz's army? Some say the prince has fled to Saxony, but most think his army's almost upon us. I heard it from Adam the undercook, whose brother keeps the inn on the road. Kettle tattle. And the soldiers, boy. What do the soldiers think? Many of them have left their posts. They're very angry. There's talk of a rebellion. And the Lord have mercy upon us. There's a lot of shouting, but I think I heard a couple say, deliverance is at hand. Is it a sign? Calm yourself. Me, mother. Is it a good omen or bad? Well, my lords, are the men at arms assembled? Madam, I beg you to reconsider. As regent of this kingdom, I have full power and I shall use it. Have the prisoners brought up from the keep? Lord Tyrrell. There has been no trial, your majesty. What is the charge against these men? Bat pig! You dare to question my mother's authority? Boleslav. If they are innocent, my lord, I dare say they will have justice. Beyond the grave. Boleslav. This is 
richly done. It's clear now that the prince is dead. Or fled to Saxony? If that were so, he would be returning with an army as we speak. Do you see preparations for a siege? It will not happen. Wenceslas is dead, and she knows it. That she is gone on this rebellion otherwise. Oh, she has the upper hand. She will win. Close the door. It's time for us to leave, my friend. Mad, where shall we go? Shield your fate now, Prince. Come on. 
Not for the memory of my father and his love for you. I would have no hesitation killing you both. You, the cause of all this evil, are banished from the realm of your son. Endeavor to rule with mercy. I shall support God's law and his church. I shall be truthful in speech, just in judgment, faithful in everything entrusted to me. The naked shall be clothed and the hungry fed. Our prison shall be destroyed, all gallows cut down. Sire? Well, that's right, sire. We need firewood. What is to become of us? <laughs> Where are we to go? We'll survive. The prince will be merciful. Well, that is the Christian way. Your Highness. those who were too frail to join us here today. From now on, no landowner in this castle shall fare better than the man who tills his field. <laughs> Come. Bring it all! God bless you, my lady. Please will keep the cold at bay. Thank you, my lady. You have a spirited daughter, my lord. Oh, she will make the prince a poor wife, I fear. She can't cook, and her sewing is terrible. Sure, the girl has other talents. Can she sing? <laughs> she has the voice of a frog. Then, Excellency, their duets will be the talk of all both in here. Madame. Thank 
the most talked about shows in the country with true stories of people in danger in a race against time. Join host William Shatner for Rescue 911 weeknights at 9 on the Family Channel.